been having some audio problems, but I think this should be overcome after the ninth reboot. Got new Wi-Fi, so if this doesn't work tonight, I'm going to be very upset. I should be very upset if this don't work tonight, guys. Hopefully, you can hear. Oh, do not say there's no audio. Come on. You're killing me there's no audio. Thank God. Good now. That's great because I didn't touch a kin thing. So that's really positive. How's everybody doing, guys? Not my monkeys? Well, I'm going to tell you a little story in a minute, guys, before we get things going tonight. Suffered a terrible accident. Only about 20 minutes ago. Uh, still sweating from it as we speak. I mean, I sweat anyway. You know what I mean? But not like that. Feels super savvy That's good. Doctor. We're working. We're live. All's good. The adverts are on. Put that over there. And we will pick up this show. Did have a couple of guests tonight. We will see who rolls in later on. I mean, Coslick, love you. Thank you for your super chat, brother. He's put... We are in a war, ladies and gentlemen, in the opening round here. Devin Larry is blasting blazing holes, or blasting holes in the hand and wrist. Levan Saganash Philly. Tell you what, mate. We're close to finding out how that one goes down. How's everybody doing tonight? And as I say, I'm going to start with a little story of woe. Oh, woe, as the case may be. Um, bought myself a new set of Crocs. Posh Crocs, they are. They've got uh, a lining in the Crocs as well, like a fleecy lining. You may have seen them in the shops near you, ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic Crocs they are. I thought they were brilliant. Don't fit perfectly, though. Uh, and as you start to use these, they do loosen off considerably, let me tell you now. If anybody who's thinking of investing in a pair of these Crocs, they do loosen off significantly. Now, the downside of that is, right, when you actually get out of... Um, the shower, been out watching my boys play football today, got out of the shower, uh, running a little bit late, so thought I'll hot step it a bit downstairs, get myself a bottle of baby on. So I set off down the steps. Uh, the slipper was a little bit loose, or the croc slipper was a little bit loose. Slipped. Feet went past my kin head. And I landed flat on my size of glass and back and bounced three-quarters of the way down my steps. Then, in even more annoying form, your missus comes out of the front room and says, what the are you doing? And as I go at you, for falling down the steps. When you have literally broken your ass. Let me tell you now, for anybody who's never done that, holy shit, that is not pleasant. Oh, it's bad. Broke my ass. Sat still for a minute, just sat there. So I'll give it a couple of minutes. Give it a couple of minutes. A couple of times in my life, but not for a very significant period of time. And let me tell you now, I'd forgotten just how unpleasant that experience is. It is really not good, guys. Really not good. So let's have a look who we got in here tonight. And the first name on my screen is Richard Jennix. We've got Pi. We got Marco GT5. Thanks for joining us, guys. Mate, the Crocs, uh, Marco, are amazing. They are a brilliant Croc. I feel like I should show you the Croc. Let me slip one off my foot. A little bit. Um, what I will say is these Crocs are a little bit dodgy in that. Can you can you guys let me see if I can get that to, to show up on the how the frig do you get it to show up on the screen? You said ha. So it comes into view. You can, they still smell nice. That's how new these are. And you, I don't know whether you can see fleecy lining. See that fleecy lining around there? That is your uh, premium croc. That is there. So, a brilliant thing. Highly recommend them. But what I would say is get like half a size lower than you'd normally wear. Maybe even a size lower. Because at the back, there's like a rubber band that goes around. Uh, and it loosens off. You take your life into your own hands. Or your ass into your own hands. Uh, Rolly Ray. Hey, Neil, sorry. I, I, I waited for the link and somehow I missed it. Dude, 
don't worry about it. I was having, to be perfectly honest with you, mate, I had a double bit of a double whammy of a misfortune. Uh, fell down my steps. Rush it, yeah. Bought myself a new set of Crocs and I actually fell down my me, me house steps this evening. Um, only about 20 minutes ago. But, mate, landed flat on my ass and my back. I'm boom, 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 down to the bottom. That's painful, son. <laughs> it's your chin broken. I'm, I broke, I've hurt my ass. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Hey, I've damaged my ass a little bit. It's definitely, definitely not fun. Don't do that. Uh, but yeah, I was just telling everybody. So let's have a look. Uh, we just got a chat from NWUK1. Uh, evening, Neil. Nice to catch you on a live, mate. As you know, I don't do live. This was actually myself and Roly recorded this just over seven years ago. Yeah. Uh, Roly right is... now has actually got wrinkles on his face, but not in this video. So, Roly. Let's let's talk about you a little bit before we get things underway with other topics. Holy shit! Mm. Really impressive. Been watching a bit of a uh, bit of Rolly action, mate. Look like oh, it. okay, okay. It took it took me a while to get it, dude. It's like looking strong as balls. Healthy, healthy. My yeah. arm is uh, really strong. Al almost where I want it to be. So, yeah. So Right now, where would you say you are in terms of your previous shape, the shape that people are used to? Because I think in some of your arm wars outings, you're in very, very good condition, really good shape. In some of the, like when you pulled Tom, it looked like you were in really, really good condition, very, very strong at that time. Are you better than that now? Similar level? I think um, so. A little bit of side pressure is not there. The mm. the the. When when I pulled Bowen and and, and uh, when I pulled um, Tom is probably when I had uh, I was thinking probably my best just yeah. uh, f physically I was at my best and uh, now I have way more top right if I I can I add back pressure and I can top roll if I want to so it's it's really good there but my my side pressure is not where it uh, like for my best it's it's close but it's not there like let me say that so um yeah yeah but very impressive mate very very close to be honest very close yeah. to that yeah you looked really really good you looked very fluid as you said a minute ago it looked like you'd uh, piece some stuff together and you were using everything as well which is not you know you were going to different things throughout the event from what i could see yeah, because I we, we we trained really hard with Hermes, and then we pulled, and it was all it was all a lot, right? And uh, as much as I have, like Giannis always said, like oh you you'll recover, that's not a problem. It still takes uh it takes something away, and my left was a lot of things were taken away from my left because mm -hmm. we did exercises to literally failure, and yeah. if I lose my wrist with my left, I have nothing for two weeks. So I knew that, and uh, I was trying to be very very smart and then with right arm i was like okay so what is the best scenario to beat all these guys by being smarter right mm -hmm. so yeah eventually it was also stronger but uh yeah yeah, yeah. i was gonna ask very, you about that italy yeah. is a country with a great arm wrestling tradition and over the, a period of time they've had some superb pullers there we've seen recently frank lamparelli at least versus yeah. West. And many people yeah. may not know about Frank. The, the Obviously, the guys within the sport will know about Frank and his pedigree. Um, other pullers that have been really, really top class out of there back in the day of Nick Skivalocki, who you often see knocking around the table at East versus West with Hermes Gasparini, or at King of the Table. In the past, you had Daniel Sakana, uh, Edimir Farocco, uh, Christian Guata, and many, many more that were coming out of there. You know, uh, David Bertoli, other good pullers from Italy. Where would you say the level is at right now? Have you, do you think that Italy is resurgent because of the success of uh, the Gladiator? So, uh, I, I, th I think, yes. There were so many people. Like, it was two-day competition. Last time I was there, 2019, um, it, was, uh, it wasn't as much. It was maybe 100 maybe 150 200 right, right? Mm -hmm. now first day they had 400 competitors just Amazing. the first day right the second day for seniors it was less but it was still like my class had 20 people uh beginner classes had 40 people there mm -hmm. so and all of them are fans 
like <clears throat> like as soon as we arrived, we couldn't like we couldn't get to the building with me and Hermes. We we had to take about twenty pictures. No, oh, that's great. Right? And it just we couldn't get to the building, and then it was all day. All of them are fans. All of them are like super interested in Armas. Thing. Armas is a big star there, and uh, it's it's great to see when someone literally makes living from from this and mm-hmm. understands that uh, like this is responsibility. He's like, yeah. it's hard. It's hard to be there and shake arms and take hundreds of pictures every day, right? Yeah, yeah. but it's part of it. It's part of it. You want to be. You want this life. This mm-hmm. is what comes right with success and things like that. Um, but level is uh, so. People always ask me where is the level. Level. I think people. Uh, everyone thinks I'm lower level than I actually am. So I would agree. I, with I think. Comment, yeah. I think most people just think like I'm a Sunday puller or something because I I'm most most of the times too nice with everyone and mm-hmm. right. Um, but if I go through everyone like butter, and I have done it in many different countries, right? The level is it's it's good, but for me it's hard to tell. Like yeah. it's just below me, right? That's what mm-hmm. I can tell. It's below me, right? Uh, but definitely, there's a lot of guys that will be very very good in 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 the future, and there's going to be a lot of there are already a lot of guys that are great already. Mm-hmm. Um, Competition level, I think, was pretty high. Uh, yeah. I don't know how many countries competed there, but there were Georgians, a uh, guy from Macedonia. There's there was a lot of guys from a lot of different countries competing there. Um, every time Super Match Italy is a big event, this time maybe the super heavyweights of uh, Italy wasn't competing. Hermes, Battaglia, Lamparelli, Kappa, mm-hmm. right? None of those guys were there. But you can understand, I don't know what's with Battaglia, why he didn't compete, but Lamparelli will pull and Animus will pull. So that's, you know, understandable why they're not competing there. Of course. Um, yeah, but uh, I think every time you see a huge amount of people coming into the sport, you will see many new stars rising, right? In, in Latvia, we have a very small number of people coming into the sport. So for us, every person is a gem, right? Mm-hmm. If someone... And our... Like me and Giannis, we talked. Our like we can create one good puller every two years, right? Mm-hmm. One world level puller every two years, and that's pretty much how it is statistics. <laughs> with and us. you got, but you really do yeah. have some fantastic in that small nucleus of pullers. You got some animals, mate. Some really yeah. good pullers, and I, it's interesting to see now. Sometimes success breeds success. You know, when you get a puller who is a bit of a a superstar in a nation then that can bring out other guys from that environment. They can be inspired. They can go out and do their own thing. You, you, you need to be an animal. Mm-hmm. You need to be an animal. Like this, it, is, yeah. this is what we see. Like um, I, I, I can, so uh, my club, we have a lot of new guys coming in. The problem is like some of my older guys are training on their own, mm-hmm. uh, like Vlad moved to a different place. Yep. So they don't see the culture where it was, where literally how we grew up, like how crazy we train, how many hours we spent training, pulling, right? They How many events they, were attended? Yeah. That's the yeah, thing as well. Yeah. And then they Ooh. see just like, oh, these guys are winning, uh, get on table. Uh, it's, you know, to the moon. Like th- that's mm-hmm. how far I'm, my level, I'm like never going to have so they don't put in that work. And yeah. I'm, I'm really happy when I see someone who's like, like you have to be like Dana Mind said, an animal, a savage. Mm-hmm. You see some of those people who are super dedicated. Like you were one of those guys. You were yes, super yes. obsessed, right? You were yeah. obsessed. And that's where the success come from. Mm-hmm. And it, it might not come right in the first year, second year. But if you're on the path, right? For me, I feel like just now it's starting to stick together when I could have finally put a focus on myself and mm-hmm. I've been doing this for 10 plus years yeah. right uh Giannis won his first world title when he was 30 right so it's different journey for different people mm-hmm. and Giannis but, was that guy as well Ray wasn't he he's that yes. he was the guy that was yes. everywhere you know you yeah. go to I don't care where you went everywhere yeah. you went there was Giannis. Every, yeah, everywhere. Yeah, Giannis pulled there. every big tournament tried to pull with every like try to win mm-hmm. uh Every competition. Uh, now, of course, less, but it's still Giannis will go to different co- tournaments all over the world all the time. Uh, but back when, right, literally when I started, they were going everywhere, every month. Mm-hmm. 
And this is how pretty much the training system got developed, right? Mm -hmm. Because you talk with people, you get the ideas, you get rid of the bad ideas, you put on some good ideas, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you talk, you get on table, you pull, you find someone like you, you thought you were invincible. Someone beats you like, okay, work to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I think it's, this is one of those qualities. This is why I say to new pullers, like, if you want to be good, you have to pull a lot, yes. uh, especially when you, when you're a beginner, like pull five classes, doesn't matter. You're going to lose them all, but that's way more than just pulling one class. Uh, let's say, and you, let's say you just pull one arm and you lose two times. There's two mm -hmm. matches. You're out. No. How about you lose 10 times? You might mm -hmm. learn something. You might learn something about yourself. You might yes. risk something. You might, Right. So experience is the most important currency in arm wrestling, in my opinion. Experience. And some people will go through it like faster, slower, uh, like Reno, uh, straight to the worlds and at the highest level possible, right? And then he, at one point, like we talked this year, he's not going to pull so many tournaments. Like he, last year, he pulled like almost everywhere, almost everywhere because he mm -hmm. wanted to get the experience, Right. Now he reached that level where most likely he will win if he goes there. There's no point of going. So he has to, uh, you know, focus on worlds, Europeans or super matches. And that's how it is. Everything changes. But when you're you're just starting, just pull as much as I can. I've missed those days when I could pull like three different classes, right? Yeah. And it wasn't pros, <laughs> right? But you're you've been incredibly active. You're all over the place. You're everywhere and anywhere. Obviously, you do this full time, um, and you you have been very. I was going to get to that actually. A lot of people are very excited, and the next stop of the train is obviously East versus West. Uh, but there's another big match coming at King of the Table as well, just after that, uh, and you got an opportunity to get a really up close and personal look at Hermes. And one of the, mm -hmm. the subjects that I wanted to talk about and engage the chat about tonight is where can the level go to? Because different people have different opinions on the rate of progression for a guy that is in the situation that you just described, the Reno Masic, the guy that's already there. He's already at the absolute elite level, the Yanis Amelins, the guy that's been everywhere, done everything for so many years. How much progression can they make? And we look at what's coming uh, on April 20th, no limit, Stevan Larratt going for the, the top of the tree again, trying yeah. to take it off a man who's universally recognised as the pinnacle of the sport, possibly ever, in the super heavyweight division. But you can't forget about the other chasing pack that are coming up, and Hermes Gasparini is one of them. The resurgent Georgi Svetkov, Gennady Kvitvinja, Morozov, the returning Valentin. Alex Kadecha, so many guys. Vitali looks ridiculous. But how much of a change, how much vibrancy can we see from these guys when they have been doing it forever, Ray, in your opinion? Do you think we can see a very different Devon Larrett? Because I'll tell you, I'll tell you this before we get into it, right? So this week I get two messages from people very, very close to Devon Larrett. Mm -hmm. guys I've known for many years who were on the inside track with Dev know him very well, been pulling with him recently been observing very closely on the build up to this match and guys whose opinions are hold in high regard and they're very straight shooters and both of them say that they are seeing something from Dev that they've not seen for many years, one, one in particular um, mentioned the fact that and this will give away if it is, but mentioned the fact that when he came over to Arm Wars Deep Water, where Devon famously beat John, that he's not seen Devon this focused, this complete, this ready since those times. And I wanted to sort of tune in on that a little bit and keep with the theme that we put out there tonight, the push for the summit. Is it real? Is it myth? Is it in your head? How much difference can you make to yourself when you've been doing it forever, right? That's a great question, right? Because everyone oh, knows their it? limits. It's a hard one. It's a hard one as an athlete, right? Uh, mm. When you've been at the same, like how much better can you get, right? Where can you really improve? Well, uh, so many considerations, isn't there? Yeah. Age, injury, yeah. all the things you pointed to a moment ago. Well, why would I go there? Because I might get hurt and then I slide down mm. the ladder again. Your opponent may have been injured, as in this case. All the questions, yeah. all the nuance from this match 
actually may be related to other factors. It may be that if there is a change in outcome, it's because Levan Saganashvili's wrist isn't 100%. But that, mm. I'm, I'm really interested to see what people believe about how far you can come, how much you can progress yeah. when you've been doing it forever. For for this match, like uh, I've been thinking a lot because it's such a big moment in arm wrestling, mm. and uh, of course, like I was giving an like right up till East versus West Ten, I was giving edge to Devon because I saw Levin, I knew he wasn't he wasn't in shape, and I was worried that the injury was too much, and it was like, oh, Devon's in the best shape, and we have never seen Devon better than before, and I agree to that. Problem is, I really be believe we have never seen Levin better than he is right now. I I believe people don't give him as credit too much because he looks like a brute. He's a very smart guy. He's yeah. very dedicated. He's he's just he. I guarantee you, he will show up probably best shape of his life. And he's he knows absolutely everything that Devon will try to do. Uh, he'll be ready for it, and we might see something completely, not, not something completely different, but we might see mm -hmm. something similar that we saw last time. Because I, I believe Levin will come in probably his best shape ever. He's looking like it. He's lifting do you mean, the weight. Do you mean an injury, buddy, or do you mean score? All of it. It's all of it. It's the score, it might be the same, right? Uh, the only time, if Devin doesn't get injured and Devin can stop him and somehow bleed him out, right, do do the Hermes Gasparini route, that's mm -hmm. that's the that's the winning factor. But the weights that Levin is lifting right now, he has never lifted more. Like he just lifted 100, what it was, 125 kilos for six reps. Mm -hmm. Like it's nothing. You have to understand it. Like for it to be s close and strength-wise, the strength gap need to be filled everywhere. And if you look like they did the same lifts and everything, and Levin is ahead. Levin is way ahead. And it with with a huge reserve. Like he's like, oh, Devon lifts this much. I'm just gonna lift a half a kilo more. And he doesn't even go higher. And we know he could do higher, right? Uh so I, I think it's a it's very, very tough battle for Devon. But right now, if anyone can beat Levin, it's Devon. And it's a I was right now, I went I get home today from training and I was thinking, what a sad moment it is. The sad moment. Let's say Levin fights Devon. He beats Devon again. Who's next one? The guy that beat everyone else is Adamus Gasparini. So he's fighting two guys back to back. No one else. Sad. Mm -hmm. Right? How much motivation can you keep? Everyone's like, oh, we need to see Levin pulling more. With who? Right? Well, this is partly the... That's partly the topic, mate. It's where the guys can come from. Because <clears throat> a moment ago you said, you know, we believe we can turn out a world-class arm wrestler once every two years. It's how long it takes to make a significant change to a an athlete who's emerging as a talent. Yeah, It's far more difficult, I believe, to make significant gains when you've been in the sport forever. You do have... Um, certain people who can break the mold if they're able to transform what they do a great deal and that by doing that it a small change can open up a new dynamic in what they do and that will be very interesting but we just had a super chat in there from uh, Skylar Brooks and it says who you got Neil? Devon or Levin? Uh, has Devon closed the gap enough to change your mind because I know the first time you, you picked Levin um, the first time they met I was very much, right up to the last minute, I was very much of the opinion that it was super close. There was things that, that put me um, leaning more towards Levin very late in the day. Um, just a couple of days before, I was probably leaning more towards Devin, if I'm honest. Because Levin looked sick. He was ill. Uh, things weren't going great. And I thought, oh, there's an alignment here and, and Dev's going to get it. This is really interesting this time around because I do feel like if you're looking at the gym maths, then you've got to go with Levin all day because he's a stronger, more powerful guy, uh, maybe by a reasonable margin. But I feel like there is an opportunity here for, for tactics, strategy, 
change and nuance. And I don't believe, as I've said many times, that the match actually happened last time. I think we didn't see the outcome. Now, that's not just saying, oh, Devon can do so much more. Uh, it's really not that. It's we didn't see what can happen. Yeah. And I think there are that in itself adds a layer of complexity. And I think that that was opened up a little bit more following the Hermes Gasparini match. And that showed not something that people didn't expect or know, but it but it sort of cemented that. It sort of proved it in a way. But I'm very interested when I get messages like the one I got this week from the guys that are close to Dev saying, holy shit, this is something different, something special, something unique. And you do get that feeling from Devon. I feel like his confidence is way higher than it's ever been. And I'm a big believer in the power of the mind in sports. I'm a big believer that you can motivate yourself to great achievement. And I'm also a believer that in Devon, you've got a guy that will learn his opponent. And I believe you've got exactly the same in Levin. I think Levin is a lot smarter than people think. And I think he'll be trying very, very hard to break down everything he felt last time. And I genuinely wonder how, who, which one of these guys has more viable data on the other. Because they only really faced each other for one round. Mm. Mm. You know, and and let me know what you guys think in the chat, and also yourself, Ray, if, if you think that I'm off the mark on that one. But in my opinion, it just didn't happen last time. Calvin Jones has come in with a super chat. How about Kadecha mm. versus Sparong as a left hand match? Great match, mate. Both supreme talents, both on the rise. I was supremely impressed with uh, Tobias. I thought he looked incredible. I I said before I'm on the fix that I thought. Uh, that Wagner was going to struggle with him for a lot of reasons. Dynamism, uh, I think he was he's tailor made to beat Wagner in, in a lot of ways. There, um, Kadechu is a different animal, so that's a very very interesting matchup. Uh, and Alex looked incredible against Morozov. He looked like he really had uh, bolted some on there. He really did. Uh, we got yeah. one more super chat that's just come in. Scampy evening, gents. Great to catch you live for a change. If Devon beats Levin, uh, what do you think he will or should? do next well there's a lot of options there isn't there i mean who would you like to see him go out next mate i'm, I'm kind of thinking i'd like to see uh i'd like to see a very um, top yeah 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 even it, it, it's uh i think um it kind of makes sense in most like yeah. strength sports or you know combat sports where you pick the guys that are winners against winners right whoever climbed the ladder but in armor sling styles make matches, mm -hmm. right? Different opponents cause different problems. So I think Vitali is definitely up there, you know, who you know who Devin definitely needs to pull. And I think he wants to pull him as well, right? I think mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah. Um th this match is uh I think it's gonna be big. It's again gonna be super divisive. A lot of people, as usually, gonna believe ah. whatever, you know, at the end. Um. Yeah, I I said it. I said it before. When Levin comes back, he's the favorite in any match versus anyone. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh. There were so many people who thought that Devon will absolutely lose to Dennis last time they pulled. Right. Mm -hmm. Because oh, they pull lefty, so it doesn't matter. Why should they pull righty? Right. And we saw how that match went. So in arm wrestling, you never know. And I think that's the magic. Right. Anything can happen. I see both of those guys winning. I have an edge for Levin because he's 11, I think not only, like, you, you know this, and you know this is an arm wrestler, right? You can have, let's say, a super heavyweight guy, right? Let's say you're a uh, nail pickup at 80 kilos, and you're facing 120 kilo guy, mm -hmm. and the guy is same strength as you, yeah. and it will be so uncomfortable, because the, the, the size difference is a huge advantage, even mm -hmm. though strength-wise, you are the same. Let's say you lift all the same weights, you do the, all the same moves, it will be so uncomfortable, right? And mm. Levin will be much bigger. Like his hands, like you have seen his arms, his yeah. hands. It's right. So all Other the world. leverage points, yeah. otherworldly. No one like him. No one like him right now in arm wrestling. So all that is a huge advantage for Levin. And uh, the only thing that is kind of, and I think there's two things that Devin is aiming for. First, to make him tired, make Levin as tired as he can. The other one is uh, 
roll out and get him on his pronator and yeah. then try to break him down there, even if he loses the wrist or whatever. But do that because we saw those two things work and do it before round number five. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm going to pick one up here. So yeah. uh, Wacker Khan, I think, uh, sorry if I mispronounced the, the name there, brother. Uh, great name, incidentally. He's put Neil, it was Levan who destroyed Devon's bicep because he was simply too strong. That may be the case, mate, but it's by no means clean cut. And the example I use to illustrate that is if you look at strongman, for example, and many other sports, but let's go with strongman. I spoke on uh, Engin Terzi's show on his live a couple of weeks ago about the fact that Luke Richardson destroyed his bicep tendon numerous times. Once when he was lifting one of the lighter stones in the Atlas stones, Castle stones, Magalashian stones, call them what you want. One of the lighter stones, a stone that he's lifted hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times in training, in competition, and lifted stones much bigger than the one that broke his bicep. So answer me this. Why did his bicep break? Why? Because he's lifted that stone very easily many times. So the stone wasn't too heavy. It was just a set of criteria that created that situation on the day. And this is an evolving sport. This is a sport that evolves during the match. The style of arm wrestling that Devon does and has engaged in a great deal and did on the lead up to the first time these guys met was very, very materially difficult. Put enormous strain on tendons, ligaments. That kind of stuff can stay with you till the wee hours, particularly when you look at the way that many, many times we've seen Devon in matches where he's super stretched out, shaking, hanging on to the death, putting incredible strain on those things. So then when something's inherent, and there's residual damage there, it can go at any time, and you don't know when. Also, knowing Devon as I do and as Ray does, he will pull when he's pretty scrapped. And before that, going into that match, there was a massive amount of residual damage in his arm. One of the biggest things which Devon points to is giving him the resurgence is the stem cells. Holy shit, Rolly Ray. Lovely darts. I like your work, son. It's pretty impressive. No idea how you did it. Very good. So, answer me that. Why did his bicep break? Why did Luke Luke Richardson's bicep break on a small stone, effectively, twice? It's weird. Think about that for a minute. It may be that Levan is too strong, but that may not be why the bicep broke. We don't know. Could be, could not be. All I'm saying is, I don't believe that we have yet seen all the possible connotations of this arm wrestling match. And I hope... More than anything else, forget who wins, more than anything anything else, I really hope we get to see this thing concluded properly. We get to see the thing run its total course. And I think both men would be more comfortable with that. And in a way, that's one of the reasons they're both doing it. And what everybody wants to see is both these guys make it to the finish line fully intact and get the opportunity to give their best on the day. That's the one. That's what I want to see. You know? Um, Alexander Silver, why is it so hard for Neil to admit Levon is the best of all? It's actually not hard at all, mate, <laughs> in any way. It really isn't. Uh, if Levon wins the match, I have no problem with saying that. Right now, I do actually rate him as the best. So, yeah, that's not really a representation of, of what I feel. I just believe we haven't seen the match yet, and that's why I'm so excited to see the match. Anyway, let's get back to one of the points we were talking about a moment ago. Let's talk about the gladiator, Emma's Gasparini. Where's he at, mate? Head, arm, confidence. Confidence, all time, all all time high. Biceps, <laughs> all time beautiful. I I had so much fun. I don't remember. I just posted our practice when we pulled. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we trained on Thursday, and then we we did the pulling, and it. I'm I'm just like watching the video, so I have to maybe edit something out. And it's just, just laughing. It's so much fun. He's such a fun guy to be around. Yeah, he really is. Super confident. Super confident himself. Works very, very hard. He mm-hmm. he takes it as serious as he can. He's like, I want that at the end of the year, he's like, I want to face the champion and I want to get the belt to Italy. That is his absolute plan. Um, 
like he's he's ridiculously strong. He's re- absolutely ridiculously strong. His right arm is, of course, way better than his left. But even with left, I talk with him because he knows, like, uh, Alijan is one of my favorite left arm pullers of all mm. time. And he's like, what do you think? And I said, like, man, if you beat him, I'll be very impressed. He's like, I will beat him. He's like, this. It's he's, he's 30 kilos lighter than me. He has no chance. That's how he feels. Oh. And, uh, you know, he's like, um, with Morozov, he's like, I didn't feel as great. My left is better than now. When I pulled, pulled Morozov, he's like, I, I I will beat him. So he has full confidence, full mm-hmm. confidence, right? Of course, the main goal is the right arm. But if he takes uh, W on the left as well, he, he'll be very happy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, super strong. They did pulling with Kordeka, uh, Kordeka. He says Kordeka, so now I started saying Kordeka. Uh, and it was because... Well, you were there, course, was, yeah? He, he kept, Alex yeah, was there. I'm arriving and I see them taking the table and, and walking into a room. And I'm running, I'm like, and I go in that room mm-hmm. and no one is there. And I didn't notice there was a back door and they went behind it. Okay. So 40 minutes later, they all come out. I'm like, what happened? They're like, awesome. So they did, did some pulling, uh, very slow controlled. I think no videos, nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, b- both of them talked very highly about each other and gave them gave each other tips on their future opponents and things like that. So here's one for you then, mate. I mean, my personal opinion right now is that uh, Levon represents the pinnacle, and I think he represents probably, uh, if he is at his best, the pinnacle of super heavyweight arm wrestling that we've ever seen, in my opinion. Um, and why I believe that is because I think Levon's got an enormous amount of technical ability as well for a guy that is ridiculously strong. Um, his strength level is arguably as high as anyone's, but if you look at it as a package, strength level and technical diligence, technical well-roundedness, I think that that's a separating factor. And so he represents the absolute pinnacle. You take your pick who you want to put below him, the pecking order. I think most people believe that looking at that same measurement criteria, that Devin is probably the most worthy challenger. When you speak to someone like Aramis now, who's faced Devin recently, came on the losing end of that match, what's his perceived steps to the pinnacle? If he's looking to get to the summit of the sport now, after what he's experienced recently, how many matches does he feel he needs? Does he want? We know he's lined up to pull uh, Dennis which is a super exciting match again. We can talk about that. But how many steps in his mind do you think? I think uh, in his mind, he wants to beat at least a few more, like the highest level pullers to Mm -hmm. build that confidence. And then whoever is on top, I think he he will definitely deserve the shot, right? Uh, Like we live in this very weird one where these three guys are fighting each other. And it's say, let's say, whoever loses, Levin versus Dennis, De- Devin. I don't want to see any of them pull Hermes again. And let's say the same guy wins, and he has to pull again, right? Mm-hmm. No, how about we mix it up a little bit, right? Yeah. Uh, there's there's guys. There's Vitali. He already pulled Vitali. Uh, there's Georgi. There's uh, Morozov. One. There's the Dennis, is a good one. right? Yeah. There's there's few guys mm-hmm. that I think. And especially for himself, like for Hermes, he he really wants to fight all the best. Like he has no, so, some people are like, oh, you know, see this guy and this guy is ducking. No one's ducking in a, anyone in Hermes, like I think. If you're, like, if you want to be the champ, you know who you need to beat, right? And even if you don't beat, you will get a nice lesson in it, right? So everyone is pretty much very open to pulling everyone. Sometimes, like, you know, this guy is too much. I, there's no point of me pulling that mm-hmm. guy. But, uh, at the height that Hermes is, in my opinion, top three puller on the planet. It's uh, it, let's say if Levin is back, it's Levin, Devon, and Hermes right now. That's my top three. That's yeah. my top three. And who yeah. who do you feel sits right behind him? If those are your three, who's the next in line? I think Vitali. I think uh, Georgi. Who wins in those two? I. I, let's hope it happens and let's hope we can see it and let's hope mm. we can find Kurdecha is somewhere right there as well. Um, Morozov, and we know that's a match that's coming. Kurdecha and Georgi yeah. Svetko coming. Yeah. 
So yeah. that's a great match right there. That's an absolutely great match. Very yeah. important match, I feel. Yes. Yeah. Kudic is also like so like a superstar. Like some mm -hmm. people just have that quality, right? And uh Kurdeche, Hermes, Devon, Levan, even Dennis, right? They 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 just have it. Like Georgi Tsvetko have it. You know what I mean, right? Yeah. The it yeah. the it factor, right? There's some people they just have it. Their personality is bigger than than they are. And uh I think all those guys are are needed to pull and see more. And Kurdeci, I I can't wait. Him and Georgi, it's a tough match for both of those guys, right? Mm -hmm. Both of those guys will. I think it will be absolute war. I think it will be absolute war. And uh, yeah, we have Gennady coming back at the end of the year, right? Uh, the last guy that beat Devon. Let's go, let's go. I so think who do you put in with straight off the bat, yeah. mate? If you if you're bringing him back in, right? And let's leave let's leave Devon and, and, and Levin out of it. Unless of course you think that he should go immediately to the So it let's say if Levon wins the match. Okay. Then... I think that that, that that Devon will ask for a match versus Gennady. I think he will Even if he lo you think he would if he lost. Yes. Hmm. Because I think he definitely would if he won. Because just yeah. in your own mind, if you were Dev, you'll be thinking, "Well, I'm going to put that one to bed." Yes. So yeah. can be I, 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 I think with Devon, there's uh, whoever says like Devon, oh, he doesn't want to. Pull. No, Devon wants to pull all of those. Guys. Oh my God, Devon pull the devil in no. straps. He pull anybody. I, I, yeah, but I think people just uh, misunderstand armistice with fighting and things like that. It's, it's not like that, right? Yeah. It's people keep forgetting. Like, let's say uh, now we. It's a different era because they're super matches. So mm -hmm. the bigger guys, they don't go to tournaments. They have an option to make money pulling super match, mm -hmm. right? Very good. Back in the day, it wasn't like that. So you, like, this was the thing that you loved. So you went to tournaments. Most likely, there was some money prize. And the same guys pulled the same guys for 10 years, hundreds of times, right? You have those guys that you've been, like, back and forth, back and many, forth, many, right? Many, many, All the time. Right. And now it's like, oh, like when someone puts like Matyushenko versus Rina, someone said like, oh, the last time they, no, first time they're going to pull and they're going to mm -hmm. pull more and more and more on, on different stages. And you yep. will see. And this is, this is the beauty of Armistice, right? Um, but I think we need to make a big distinction with super match and tournament pulling. Those things are not the same. And they can lead to different outcomes, right? Mm -hmm. If uh, Mindaugas would pull Dan uh, Daniel in a tournament, he lost him two times. Daniel is the champ. Go home, Mindaugas. But on that day in a super match, he beat him four two. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Oh so, my God, yes. Yeah. yeah, that's why it's where it's very interesting where where he wants to slot in, where people want him to slot in, where is it Where is it sensible to put him in the mix with? Because, you know, let's be honest, he's been out for a little bit of time and it's not that easy to jump straight back on the horse. Uh, I don't think no. for, for one minute that Levan Saganashvili won't pull anybody. He'll pull anybody you want. And I'm sure he'll yeah. pull anybody with it's a just, tremendous amount of confidence. And he should, because he's the best in the world. It is just problematic. Like, you, you can put him against anyone, but you want to put him against someone who's winning. You want someone yeah. on a winning record. You don't want someone on a losing record. And who wants that... to pull him? Let's be honest. Exactly. Who exactly. And wants to do that? Plus, who will want to watch it, right? Mm. You know the outcome. You most likely know the outcome. You might be like, uh, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I might be surprised, but most likely not. And right? if he cracks so Dev, no... right? If he beats Dev. And let's say he beats Dev pretty comfortably. Yeah. Do, what does that do for Levin? I mean, you said a moment. How's he going to stay motivated? You do that. He's going to want to put. I him. don't know. I don't know. And if this, if the let's say the next in line is Aramis, right? Again, back to back, two two of the same guys. Like, uh, <laughs> let's make left arm great again, mm. and you know maybe wait till the challenger arises on right. But yeah. if it's the same challenger, what the fuck do we do? It's right? difficult, isn't it? It's it's not just difficult. It's a real problem. Yeah, it's a it's a real problem. Now, right. for the hardcore, it's good that there are so many engaging matches out there, and there are a tremendous amount. One of the things um, we had, uh, RVJ, 
Rob Vision was on the show last week. Love RVJ. One of my favourite arm wrestlers. One of my favourite guys in the sport. Considering uh, one of my, my closest friends in the game. Brilliant bloke. Anybody who doesn't... Um, if you don't know RVJ, he's often very misunderstood. But I, I love a lot of things about Rob. Very raw, very straightforward guy. Absolutely sticks to his principles. Says what he says. A lot of things I really like about the lad. And he's about to go on a sort of two-match arm wrestling spree where he is sort of illustrating what I'm talking about here, right? So he's about to pull in the Arm Gods gig and he's pulling against James Wall. James Wall is a banana skin. He's an up-and-comer with a tremendous amount of explosivity. You'll have seen him he's featured in Arm Wars many times and he's a beast. If you want to see his resume, you only need to look at the fact that he is one of those guys that's been in the game for sort of eight to ten years and he's on the rise without a shadow of a doubt. He's very much an improving force. He's fast, he's explosive, extremely powerful, super dedicated. If Rob gets through that challenge, and I'm sure he starts as a favourite, his next match will be <coughs> against Jerome Loud. Mm -hmm. Now, <coughs> think about that. Some people in the chat who are more casual fans may not know Jer of, of Jerome Loud. For those guys that are the hardcore that follow the sport, they will know that Jerome Loud is no bum. This dude represents a very, very strong puller. When he's at his best, unbelievably dangerous puller. But again, if ever you wanted evidence of that banana skin, there's the guy. There's a guy that is, if you're Rob and you're coming into this thing and you're the name, right? So Rob's a charismatic lad. He goes out there. He's got a very entertaining YouTube YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed to Rob Vigent Jr., you're missing out. You want to go over there and get subscribed to that guy straight away. He's, he's, he's a super charismatic, super engaging character. Now, if you look at that and look at the situation with the two guys he's pulling, as I say, He's pulling in, in arm gods against James, and then he's pulling against Jerome Loud. If he was to lose both of those matches, there's an argument there that his reputation drops like a stone with a casual fan because they think to themselves, you know what? Ah, these guys that he lost to, nah, they ain't all that. They're not big names. They're not, they're, they're not in the public eye. They're not guys that you may know about, but they may just crack a lot of the guys that you do know about. And there's many examples, I feel, in the sport, even sitting around that super heavyweight division, there are guys there that maybe aren't as well known. Let's say Georgi Svetkov mm -hmm. is a guy that, yeah, people know about, but he probably isn't given the same reputation as some of the guys. And yet, within the sport, he's like one of those guys that it might be pertinent to duck. Because he is a very, very serious proposition. Really, really dangerous. Acid G is an animal. And there are a number of guys out there that are like that. And we've seen a couple of them emerge. And very recently, Matthew Shenko, I think, fell into that category. Because before he, he was sort of brought into East versus West and he caught that mystique buzz around him, nobody was talking about the fact that that guy existed. Nobody was saying, hey, there is that one guy. Mm -hmm. you know yeah it's Simon's we need there's there's so many of like people are always shocked when they see like oh this guy or, or mm -hmm. some junior beat some like yeah there's good armistars there's good armistars that give them an opportunity and they might present themselves yeah uh, they can like you know this every dog has its day right so everyone can shoot out something that it, you, you know they didn't know they had it in them so um there's there's way more of arm wrestling than we just see. We just see some big names, and most of the time, not most of the time, but some of the time, they're not the best pullers on the card. Like they're, they might be even thirtieth or hundred number, but you know they have an opportunity, and they use their opportunity, right? So arm wrestling is getting deeper and bigger, deeper and bigger, and we're gonna see way more, way more East versus West arm wars, king of the table. Arm Gods and all the other promotions are doing a great job just, you know, showing that talent. Uh, Arm Gods are kind of going a little bit under the radar. Are, are you, hey, I just saw some videos. Are you, are you guys beefing? What's going on there? Oh, mate. Um, I, listen, or, or it's there's a one way beef between myself and, <laughs> and, and I don't think it's Arm Gods. I, you know, I've, I've never had a Is it Paul made word it? with it. Paul's <laughs> loves me, dude. <laughs> 
Oh, I'm out. I you just, know, I just saw some videos. And I'll I was tell like, you. I don't even want to know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because because they have a card next week, right? Yes. Yeah, and I think it's and, a great card for Ireland next weekend. Yeah, uh, great card. A lot, lot, du- lot of dudes on that card. Um, yeah. yeah, some old timers on there that are coming back and going to get some serious tests there. Yeah. Um, yeah, very solid. There's some really solid pullers on there of the like I just spoke about. Plam and Dimitrov's pulling there. Jordan Sonef. I think people are more probably a little bit more familiar with Jordan Sonef because of, they've seen him in the uh, Canadian matches also and seen the level that he's at and what he's done. So there, there are guys out there that are right at that level and other guys that are on the rise. But I think a lot of people sort of within the arm wrestling community are focused on 20 guys, 30 guys who they think are the absolute killers. But sat just below there, there are some real, really, really solid arm wrestlers. The the issue is marketing is a problem. Yeah. For a lot of these guys, marketing <clears throat> is a problem. And the super heavyweights will always draw the attention because of yeah. the fact that they are Giants Live, right? To the guys. Yeah, that is. You know? That is true. Yeah. And it's the, 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 the amount of... Uh attention they get is just too much mm-hmm. i think not, not just it's not too much but it's insane compared to everyone else yeah. right you have to be crazy superstar with the crazy personality and then pull and be the champ right that only the champs will get the most attention right everyone else you can you can have fans you can have support but no one you know no one loves more you when you're if you're losing no one loves you like that's, that's and it's that evolution reality. in weight class as well, I think, mate. We've seen it with other combat sports where you know it's always led by someone, something, and if it isn't, it's led by physicality, and that's your super heavyweight division. Do people really appreciate? Well, take your pick on weight classes, but let's say let's go with Daniel and Mindex's class, okay? Yeah, do people really appreciate the, the depth of talent in that class? Do they appreciate, do they care that you know? Alan's life th- out no. there. Do they care? No. Do they, uh, do they know about, care about Makarov? I know the hardcore mm. do, the diehard do. Yeah. But do the fans, do the guys that are, you know, that are pacing the chats day in there? Yeah. How, yeah. how engaged I, I, them? I, I think uh, I, I can explain, like, for people why why we think these guys are so amazing. And what, what do we see in them, right? What others don't see. Because others will see, like, okay, this is a comparator. He's the champ, right? Mm-hmm. They are so far away from the path, it's ridiculous. They are so far ahead of everyone else most of the time that it's not even close competition. No. So whenever someone scratches one of these gods in these classes, it's really, really impressive. This is why these these extraordinary athletes like like uh like uh, Daniel, like Mindaugas, like Arthur, like uh, Alan Zulu, are so incredible mm-hmm. because they're so far away. That's yeah. the thing. And we want to see, like, do gods bleed? That is the question. Levin is so great, mo- not because he's the just champ. He was so far of everyone else. It was ridiculous, right? We wanted to see, is it, how, how can this be? Is it possible? And that's the magic. And a lot of people still don't understand the magic and they're not like watching every competition they don't know, right? Because it's impressive when you, you're a winner. In, cool, you're the champ, cool, but you're the super champ. That's the most impressive for us. And it's easy to visualize, isn't it? When you've got a guy that's a frigging, that's a walking titan. You know, you see a guy and he's just so much bigger than everyone else. It's very easy for you for, for, for anybody to perceive, okay, this guy's extraordinary. You see yeah. someone like Mindagus, Daniel, yeah. and yeah. they're walking down the street. You don't feel like that's a physically yeah. exceptional, physically imposing individual. Yeah. Doesn't look any, you know, look very unassuming. Particularly someone like Mindagus doesn't look anything exceptional at all. Yeah. But my I would God. I would use Mindaugas way more because he has uh, absolute like a sleeper build, right? Well, yeah, uh, yeah. You but, don't. There's no one. There. No one would expect him. Like no. you can put him against really like some champ who's just looks like a destroyer of the worlds, and it will be a match. Mm-hmm. And this guy looks like a librarian, right? Yes, he does, and he can pull up classes. He can pull up classes against guys 
against a lot of right up to the 90 kilo class, maybe 100 kilo class. Size does matter, and I don't, I'm not suggesting that uh, Minigus does that because it's not a great way for longevity in your career, but his capability to do that, oh, don't doubt it, you know, do not doubt yeah. it. And if you speak to a lot of the big men and you ask them about, you know, Talgat and how it feels when that guy hammers into you. Boom, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Even the big guys. And Talgat's another one. If you look at laterally when he's put a bit weight, weight yes. on, he looks a little bit more impressive. But prior to that? Yeah, nothing. You think, like, this guy, really? I him? should be worried. That's the dude. Boom, he beats Jacques, right? Terrifying individual. Blisteringly yeah. quick. Brutal guy. So, yeah, I, I think um, there's always going to be that marketing challenge there. Always going to be that marketing challenge. But never doubt that there is a summit in each of these weight classes. Yes. You know? And, yes. and yes. I think in some of the lower weight classes, the irony is that the summit is far less clear. Far less clear. Yeah. I think it's a lot more closely contested than a lot of people believe in those lighter weight divisions. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we it, talked about it on every on any given day. Well, and most of the time it will be right, especially when there's uh, weight classes. Right, people are talking about like, oh, this guy should pull. Like, I think the weight classes exist for a reason. It's fair. It's more fair than anything else. Right. Mm -hmm. The amount of muscle, the amount of mass you can put on limits you to some weight class. So uh, I have seen so many times where guys will have like a great match in a class and then they set up a super match, no weight cap. And mm -hmm. one guy shows up like he was last time, one shows up 10 kilos heavier and that's not even close, right? So all the fairness just went out of the window. Uh, so when you make it things close, they're going to have pretty much like same values attributes right it's it's going to be closer and then there's going to be exceptions like they always are and uh, that makes it more fun this is why the most like weight classes are more contested in the middle the top is always far away uh heavyweights usually there's a once runaway and then everyone else is kind of weird if you look like let's say world championship uh, very rarely you will see, like in heavyweights, you will see big battles from, let's say, if Pataglia, um, Cvetko, and Arif is in the same class, all those guys will have battles because they know each mm -hmm. other, in, the, in my opinion, very close on the same levels. Everyone else is just easy and fast, easy and fast, right? So the level difference might be to the moon. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah. The title of the thumbnail. We're, we're going to be on here for about another ten minutes, guys. Then we're going to we're going to jump off because it's late for Rolly over there. Way past I want my bedtime. Just, <laughs> I want to. It needs his beauty sleep. I want him to just true. try and lock in on the push on the the thumbnail, the push for the pinnacle, the push for the summit. Mm -hmm. Now, if Devon Lara wins this match. Is it over? Is it done? Has he reached the summit of all time in arm wrestling in terms of super heavyweight prowess? If Levon Saganashvili wins this match, is there anyone else worthy right now? Really? Or are we in a similar situation to what you spoke about earlier where is there a match that really makes sense or are we putting it on for, yeah, just to prove the point that we already know? <laughs> Let's go break those down one at one at a time. If if we look at a win from Dev, what does it represent for him? Is it the real summit, or is there other questions? I I think for him it is. I think it it, it is the uh, he he could retire afterwards, right? He could retire, but it wouldn't be fair, and he wouldn't do it first of all. But it wouldn't be fair for Levin, right? Because Levin was on the top. There was no mm -hmm. climb to the top, right? So you should give him a fair chance to try to climb the top if you just beat him right there. Um, but for Devin, I think that is it, right? He There's literally no one else. That's, that's the match of his life. He beats the guy. He's the super heavyweight champion, undisputed. No, just no 
no doubt in anyone's mind. And like Travis said, if he beats him, no one's going to beat him until he ends his career. And that could really be true. That could really be true. Because if you have skill set, strength, and just mind to beat someone like Levin, like who can beat you? Like who can beat you, right? Uh, that's that's how I feel. That's how I feel. I kind of feel like with Dev, there's going to be more questions thrown at him. Um, because he gets he ignites so much emotion, positive and negative. But I think immediately, because of the one floor with Gennady, people are going to scream mm -hmm. that from the rafters. Particularly mm -hmm. the people who would like to see him lose would scream mm -hmm. that from the rafters. Well, Gennady, quick being you're going to beat you. He beat you last time. He, he And that's going to oh, come. He needs that, right? He needs to try to erase that loss. He yeah, I think he, he'll welcome it, won't he? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I think it's a match, win or lose, right? He's ready to pull him every day, every day. Just mm -hmm. give him a time and day. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's such a weird thing because he's the champ and he's been, you know, dealing with best of the best in the world for the whole last year. And uh, people are still like, oh, you know, but you lost to this guy. Well, we all lose, you know, things happen. You, you, I feel like it's more difficult for Levon in many ways because mm -hmm. if 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 Levon beats Dev and beats him comfortably, yeah, I said it's super, kind of difficult to make lonely. a case for yeah. anyone coming through, isn't it? It's That's difficult. Yeah. You need you need guys starting to beat up on Devon. Man. Yeah, if like it doesn't make any right. Yeah, they got to run through him. And how many you run through him? I mean, or are we just making matches for the sake of making matches and maybe, maybe you know, something will stick. Maybe something will kind of happen. Styles do make matches, so maybe, maybe. But, um, yeah, it's uh, it's not looking great if Levin wins for well, Levin. I want, I want everybody to try, boring. and yourself as well, to try and picture this in your head, right? For the outcome of where, you, where everybody sees this and the magnitude of this match. If you picture in your mind, right, matches that make sense and you think, okay, Devon versus Vit uh, Vitali. Okay. Laletin yeah. versus Dev. Does it make sense in your mind right now when you put those together? Are you interested? Do you think that's a really good match? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same soup warmed over, but with Levin. How many people find it hard to wrap their head around uh, Laletin having any chance with Levin? Do you find it difficult when you... I think stylistically, I think it's a tough match. I think it's stylistically a very good match. But we also saw that match, right? We mm -hmm. saw all those, right? Suddenly, out of nowhere, Dave comes back, starts destroying everything, taking Ws. Then we have to do him and Dave again. No. <laughs> it's, it's very lonely and cold at the top. It's very lonely, lonely and, cold. and cold at the yeah. summit, mate. Yeah. yeah. And you need something to reinvigorate you. It is going to be such a telling time, but I think that I I've been trying to keep my eyes on the chat a little bit. Uh, Roger Cunningham's just come in there. He's put Levan as 460 now, but only because he had an additional dual <laughs> lung implant. Thanks for that, Roger. Hey, Roger. Hey, Roger. Roger's a good dude. Um Joking aside, going to be very, very interesting to see how this thing plays out. But I think the connotations of it are probably more interesting than the match themselves, if I'm honest. And the emotion that it stirs up is is amazing. Um, even just looking at the chat now and again, I know, uh, I know it's not even really got warmed up yet. There's far more to come. But I think most of the questions have been around the nuance within what is going on with the two athletes themselves, where they are physically, where they are mentally. All the signs are good from both camps. We'll probably get an absolute raft of that information coming very shortly because that we know that uh, Engin has been over there in Tbilisi uh, spending time uh, with Levon Saganashvili. And you've got to say that as a physical specimen, Levon looks ridiculous. I mean, his frigging arms look absolutely stupid. Looks ridiculous, you know. Dev, I want to say, looks very... Very conditioned, very healthy. Yeah. Really yeah. interesting. John Augustine, just coming with a super chat. Thanks, brother. He's put, what do you guys think of Travis's idea of putting up 
uh, putting upper tier lighter weight guys up against lower tier heavyweight guys in competition to keep things interesting. I think they already do, mate. <clears throat> I mean, we do that a lot in arm wars. We 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 ran a match very recently with uh, a guy called Adrian Popescu, Dracula Popescu, on the left arm, and he pulled Declan Dillon, who's a very very uh, new but extremely powerful super heavyweight. The result was an absolute death war. A lot of the guys who were uh, channel members will have seen that incredible matchup. So I, I don't think that's a concept that's particularly new. I do think that um, at this point in time, right now, if you crystallize things down, John, there's still a lot of options for really good matches out there, even in the super heavyweight division. But it may not be for the summit, for the pinnacle. I think yes. a lot of people will shy yeah. away from either man, whoever comes through this match i don't think many people will be queuing up to get a shot and i think particularly with levin particularly with levin i think if levin comes through a lot of people will think ah oh, god you know the, the, it, yeah maybe maybe not that guy um yeah and i think it, there are various guys that have experienced that uh, as as ray said a moment ago it is cold and lonely yeah. at the top and it really is and that'll yeah. be interesting to see who steps up. The last time a guy stepped up and called it out big time, it was Hermes. He wanted it, yeah. he asked for it, and he did exceptionally well. But he did well in some respects also because people gave him no chance. There's also, no chance. Yeah. like, if that moment would not happen, right? If the whole armistice world would have been different. This match, we would look at like, uh, what's the point? It's going to be same outcome, right? Mm -hmm. But because that happened, there was hope. I saw saw some hope. Yeah. <laughs> right. And it's interesting, yeah. isn't it? Because when you meet Levan Saganashvili, what a great dude. A lovely bloke that is. And what Absolutely. a extremely technically articulate and powerful lad he is. Very, very complete puller up there. Puts together his stuff very well. Obviously, he's got himself to a level of strength that's unbelievable. We're not sure how strong he is. Uh, we know that he had some issues. And it's the, the fact that a lot of people believe that his biggest weakness is going to be the gas tank says a great deal about where his level of top-end strength is. You know, I would like to see this turn into an arm wrestling match. I would like to see Devon be close enough to make this an absolute screamer. I would like to see both guys have to go to good old-fashioned arm wrestling to win this thing and see various connotations technically play out. That would be my dream scenario for this thing. It really would. Win, yeah. lose, or draw, either man. If it is an absolute screamer. And you know what? I feel like both guys are, are longing for that a little bit. Real challenge, real match. A real challenge, a real match. Now, before I let you go, mate, you've just come back from spending time with the gladiator. King of the table. See. Does he crack Dennis? And if so, easy, hard? I think he can... Uh, he has a good game plan. Really good game plan. We talked about it. Uh, he's very confident. And he will be... like. There's still a lot of time for it, like three months, right? Mm -hmm. So he will be extremely strong, extremely strong. Like he would, he was just now he was just chilling. He was just uh, preparing his left arm, so his right arm was not even where it should be, and mm -hmm. it was still insane. So I, I think it's a uh, if Dennis doesn't change something drastically, uh, doesn't improve, doesn't give up position so easy like he did in a match versus Devon, it's a long day. It's a long and not good day, yeah. But I think I think if I think if Dennis stops him, where you know he can stop him, it's not going to be so easy as Hermes thinks. Yeah. No. That's no. Awkward. Finito. Very Finito. very awkward. Roly, I want to say thanks for, for for coming on the show tonight, mate. Good to have you back in. You've been traveling around, kicking some ass. We know uh, John was the same tonight. I think he's traveling over to uh, to Ireland. Um, Paul, happy birthday to your boy, mate. Paul Lynn, hope you guys had a great day today. And before I go, also, I want to say a massive thank you to everybody who has subscribed to this channel and also particularly to the Arm Wars channel. 
Um, 43,000 subs achieved this week. That's really great, guys. Thank you very much for all your support. Video came out uh, for members last week, just gone out for public um, on Friday night. Great match. Go check that out. Craig Sanders on the match at the dark card uh, when he faced Mika Sakwalidze, the heat seeker. Check it out. Great pull there. Guys, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for taking the time to check out tonight's fix. Um, if before you go, you can give us a sub, give us a like, give us a share. That would be fantastic, guys. If you're not already subbed to the Voice of Arm Wrestling, Rolly Ray's channel, please get over there. All sorts of global arm wrestling, both who's run by Ray. Nobody's working harder in the game right now than this, man. He's everywhere and anywhere. And as you've just seen, not a bad puller either. Ladies and gents, Rolly Ray, get over there and show this guy some love. Thank you to everybody who's in the chat. Thanks for checking around to all our super chatters tonight. I think um, Jake Ward, Aussie arm wrestler, is probably going to be going on uh, soon. He usually goes on after the fix, and I, and I did see that he was in the chat a little earlier. Um, so go check out Jake's channel tonight. I think he'll have a couple of guests on there as well. Uh, and until we see you next time here on the fix, ladies and gents, biggity bong, motherfluffers. Take it easy. Bye-bye.